We made this product for Mr. Beast. In this video, we're gonna talk about how it's designed, how it's manufactured, and why it should replace the one that they currently sell in Walmart, but done in a way that's never been possible before. So before you can understand the future, you have to understand the past. So let's go ahead and look at the original lunchbox in order to see how it was designed, why it was designed that way, and how it could be changed. So if you're looking at this lunchbox, this is actually a fairly generic sort of design that basically just has a sticker put on top of it. And while it is a fine design and will work perfectly okay as YouTuber merchandise, it has the brand so that folks will get along with it. it has the coloration, all the things. It has several pieces of functionality that are also quite good. You have a thick insulating outer layer that is filled up with foam. You have a divider ring right here. You have the ceiling ring up on top. And all of these are multiple injection molded parts, about six to seven to 10 injection molded parts, all assembled together to make this. You have the main hinge in the back. It only opens up to this far. It does not lay back flat. You have two pins that are put inside of here. And this is a piece that is mass produced so that it can be made and sold for about 25 bucks. The outer clips are of course different colors which are then assembled and put together. And the overall thing has a smooth surface finish and you can see the injection molding dot right there. And if you grab it, you have a lunch box that is now handy and easy to carry around that a kid can take to school with them and that can hold whatever their sandwich and peanut butter is that day. And that all sounds great, but let's talk about the limitations of this from a manufacturing standpoint. In order to hit that pricing and get this box, there had to be tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of them made. Now, admittedly, Jimmy has that size of a following, so he can make them at this scale because they're gonna be sold in Walmart, they're a recognizable brand, and they're right out there in front, but that injection molding process requires a really large scale. So if you have designed a new type of lunchbox or want to start something up for your YouTube channel, and you're still smaller and don't have the biggest channel on the planet, you probably will not be able to make something like this. Because the molds themselves for this part cost hundreds of thousands of dollars just to get started, and then you get your first lunchbox, at which point you find out that it's wrong, and you have to then iterate and change it over time. But there is a way of getting this done differently now to where this lunchbox could be made and sold without ever having to exist until someone actually buys it. That is what this lunchbox is for. So let's go ahead and take a look at this lunchbox. It has a few different aesthetics that we're gonna talk about here in just a little bit because all of this is actually functional for how it was designed. But aside from that, it is identical. The lid is able to open up further back than the other one is. It still has the removable internal liner that is colored to the brand. You have the splaps and you have a flexible handle right here so that the kids can carry their lunchbox and their peanut butter wherever they need to go. But there's several key advantages about this that do not appear in the other one. First of all, this one is one piece. Now you're gonna say, Gabe, how is that possible? Look at all these parts and pieces right here. Aha, uh -huh. but they were never assembled. This box came off in two pieces. This was printed all at once, and then this part was printed separately in order to get a different color. But the handle, the clips, the lid, all of this was printed in one shot so that it came off of the machine fully complete and ready to go into a box and go to Walmart or wherever you happen to be selling these. Maybe if you were a YouTuber, you just wanted to print these off and send them to your fans as they order them. That is now doable. And this is something that has never really been possible before. It's actually only been made possible by the sponsor of this video. The sponsor of this video is Teleport. Teleport is a 3D printing service that we operate that allows anyone to upload a 3D model, connect it to their e-commerce store so that whenever somebody orders your awesome new product, you're able to have it printed and shipped directly to them and you are instantly profitable on the first one without having to get a bunch of molds made up front in order to do the merch for your channel or your small business. So you can go ahead and check out Teleport over at slantpod.com. That's slantpod.com. So with the ability to print this on demand, it's really important to design it so it can be printed all as one shot. So how do you do that? Most people would say, well, you lay it flat and the lid prints over here and the top prints over here. But that means multiple parts. It also means it cannot be mass produced or easily removed because of all types of problems with bed adhesion and that kind of thing. Then the next thing everybody says is, oh, well, print it on its side like this. But that's not correct either. The issue with that is that you would now not reliable latches up here. These latches have small spines through the middle of them so they can actually rotate. But if you want them to be strong and reliable, you cannot have layer lines going up this inner edge because that would snap right off. And you want this to be strong because they have to close and snap over these edges. Additionally, you have this small thin handle down here. So again, printing on its side would be ridiculous because this cannot be printed reliably. The layer lines would be right there. It would snap right off. 
So there is no way to print it on its side like this. So what did we do? We printed it like that to where the latches are horizontal, the handle is horizontal and print in place so that now you are able to get something that is fully reliable all the way through, including up at the upper hinge because the upper hinge also has a spine all the way through it so that we basically put the pins in as the part is grown. This also gives it minimal bed adhesion so that it can be removed really easily. It also makes the front of it, the top of it, which already looks different, look different. So it's okay because this doesn't create any sort of weirdness because it's symmetrical, it still looks nice all the way through all the features that you want. In addition to that, many people will wonder about layer lines. They say, oh, well, the injection molded part is smooth. Well, the 3D printed part gets to be textured. Rather than having layer lines, you can actually print it with these sorts of noise features so that you get some looks and feels that you would not otherwise ever be able to get a hold of. This noise on it gives this this wonderful kind of matte satin finish and it makes it look really nice. The other thing, rather than simply sticking a logo on the side of it that is obviously a sticker, the logo on this lunchbox is fully embedded into it. It is engraved. It is never gonna wear off. It's never gonna fade off like some cheap band t-shirt. It is gonna be there forever. And this can be refined even more so that this logo pops more. Rather than having the interior of it textured, you could actually make it smooth so that it's fully contrasting with the rest of it. You can also make it deeper if you really want to, to get a whole lot of pop out of that logo. And something that is sculpted, that is carved, that is shaped, has a much more premium feel than something with a sticker stuck on the side of it. And this is a place where 3D printing can really shine also. The interior liner is of course printed separately because you need it to be a different color, but now it's possible for people to remove it. And this is printed without texture in order to make sure that it's easy to get the crumbs and stuff out of there. But what makes this part really superior over anything else, not just the design of it all, is the way that it's made and the way it's sourced. This had to fill up a container load and move across an ocean and cause all kinds of waste from that transport and storage and distribution. Whereas this one, since it is produced on demand only when a customer orders it, there is never any overstock, there is never any waste, and it's made with plastics that are actually very sustainable, very clean, and can be used really reliably. So overall, we improved on this YouTuber's product because it's more sustainably sourced, you have more control of the design, and with giant print farms like ours, you can actually produce tens of thousands of them and put them into Walmart if you need to, but you don't need to. Since it's using 3D printing, an entirely new technology that allows people to do things that were never possible before, you can actually make it on demand. Thanks everybody for watching and checking this video out. Comment down below if there's other products, either from YouTubers or out in life that you think ought to be redesigned for 3D printing. And we can show people how you can go from kind of old nasty ways of making stuff to the new modern clean ways of making stuff that are a lot more sustainable and a lot more interesting. Have a great day, everybody.